San Andreas Fault is creeping from stress from nearby large earthquakes at its south. This is something that is from the Southern California Earthquake Center. It's published a uh, contribution by USGS and NSF and USGS Center. And this was uh, published October 2nd, 2018, before all these earthquakes, of course, and the swarms that we're having in, in Southern California, especially in the uh, Coso Volcanic Field. But uh, it was a study having to do with how the southern part of the San Andreas Fault is affected by nearby large earthquake events. Uh, I guess it was a type of a self-fulfilling prophecy they had of what is happening now. Now we know that we've had large nearby earthquakes to the southern San Andreas Fault because of what we just had July 4th, 6.4 and July 5th, 7.1. They were at Ridgecrest, right here on the Garlic Fault to the east, the Eastern California Shear Zone, which is actually the southern part of the Warren Lake uh, Lane Fault system, and the range of mountains that we see there flanking San Andreas at the coast is the Wallach Range, which is part of the uh, Warren the Walker Lane uh, fault system. Here it is. The range is in yellow. The Walker Lane fault, as you can see, is basically parallel. You can see it better here. Parallel to San Andreas. And the uh, here again, the Garlic fault is running from San Andreas perpendicular to it towards the Walker Lane fault. San Andreas is the biggest fault in California, the longest fault. The Garlic Fault perpendicular to it is the second largest fault. Now, uh, what the Southern California Earthquake Center found, surface creep rate of the Southern San Andreas Fault modulated by stress perturbations from nearby earthquakes. The major challenge for understanding the physics of shallow fault creep has been to observe and model the long-term effect of stress changes on creep rate. Here we investigate the surface creep along the Southern San Andreas Fault, SSAF, using data from interferometric synthetic aperture radar spanning over 25 years, and Sentinel. The main result of this analysis after their 25-year study. The main result of this analysis is that the average surface creep rate increased after the lander's event and then decreased by a factor of 2 to 7 over the past few decades. We consider quasi-static and dynamic Coulomb stress changes on the south San Andreas Fault due to these three major events. From our analysis, the elevated creep rates after the landers can only be explained by static stress changes, indicating that even in the presence of dynamically triggered creep, static stress changes may have a long-lasting effect on the South San Andreas creep rates. So, in effect, these geologists, Xai Huai Xu, Lauren Ward, Junal Jiang, Bridget R. Anyway, I'll leave a link below. You can see there's uh, many geologists contributing to this. They are, are actually confirming, and they're, of course, part of the USGS. They're actually confirming that large nearby earthquakes do affect the South San Andreas Fault. They're talking about the southern area earthquakes, the large earthquakes. And of course, what we have had here was large. It was 7.1 and also the 6.4. And they say that the 7.1 lasted about half a minute. And we've even had cracks and fissures from what they've uh, told us. Now, we have earthquake swarms 
thousands a day. They're, they can't possibly plot all of them, but there has been an increase of uh, the size of them, even though they should be decreasing. There are about uh, around four, there's quite a lot that are about, about four magnitude, and uh, that's a little bit worrisome for the geologists because they should be decreasing in size. They're also meandering towards the northwest, towards Mount Whitney. Now, Mount Whitney is only 30 kilometers from Ridgecrest. Uh, I just measured it. Is it 30 from it? Yeah, from no, from Coso Junction. 30 kilometers from, uh, not kilometers, I'm sorry, miles. 30 miles from Coso Junction and about 80 miles from the center of the Long Valley Caldera. Now, the Long Valley Caldera, as we know, is a supervolcano. And it's, we don't measure the supervolcano from the center because, of course, it has a very wide uh, area. So well, that's worrisome to me, the fact that these earthquakes, of course, are in a volcanic field. And another thing that we see is that the Walker Lane Fault is a very significant fault system. It's locked into the Garlic, Garland Fault here that we see, perpendicular to the San Andreas. And that is, uh, uh, the garlic, garland is locked in with San Andreas uh, to the west, and it's also, lo uh, garland fault is locked with the Walker Lane fault to the, to the east. And the whole thing is, lo is locked in like an oval. And this whole system, especially the Walker Lane fault, is pushing northwards towards the Cascadia Arc. That's perhaps why the Vancouver earthquake of July 3rd that was off the um, North Vancouver Island, Canada, the 6.2 earthquake, 13 hours later, affected the 6.4 earthquake, July 4th in Ridgecrest, 13 hours later. And that happened again four years ago in 2015. The same exact area off Vancouver Island gave a 6.2 magnitude earthquake, and 24 hours later, they had a moderate size, 3.5, something like that, magnitude, again, at Ridgecrest. So these geologists here, surface creep rate, south San Andreas Fault, modulated by stress perturbations from nearby large events, which is, in, in effect, this one here. So it does have, the Ridgecrest does have an effect on the San Andreas Fault to the south in the Los Angeles area. And we'll have more on this as the day goes by because there's a lot of details that we have available to us by Southern California Earthquake Center and other uh, geological sites, other agencies. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.